Hi rock stars, this is Miss Rogers and today we will work on standard G3 which is partitioning shapes. You may be wondering what is it? Well partitioning shapes means to separate or divide into equal parts. Now let's go over some vocabulary words. The first word is horizontal and that is a line that runs from side to side. Next is vertical and that's a line that runs up and down. Then you have diagonal which is a line that joins opposite corners. Next we have a fraction which shows equal parts of a whole and last but not least we have the word equal that means that it is the same in size. Now let's begin the fun part. How can you partition a shape? Well first you want to start with a whole. As you can see we have a whole circle, square and rectangle. Next we have halves. A half is something that is split into two equal parts. As you can see, the circle, the square, and the rectangle are all split into two equal parts in different ways. And last but not least, we have fourths. You might hear the word four in fourths, and that is because when an object is split into fourths, it has four equal parts. As you can see, the circle, the square, and the rectangle are all split into fourths in different ways. Now, let's get some practice in actually partitioning the shapes. One day, Keisha had a cookie, and she wanted to share it with her friend. She knew that since it was two of them, and she wanted each of them to get an equal part of the cookie, she needed to partition her cookie in half, so that way the cookie would be split into two equal parts. How can Keisha partition her cookie in half? So I want you to watch me as I partition this cookie in half in different ways. The first way that she could partition this cookie in half is by cutting it vertically, which means up and down. Watch me as I partition this cookie in half. I have to take my time to try to make it as even as possible. So see, now the cookie is split into two equal pieces. Keisha would have one out of the two pieces and her friend would have one out of the two pieces. So each of them would receive half of the cookie. Let's think of another way that Keisha could partition her cookie in half. Another way that she could partition her cookie in half is by cutting it horizontally, which means from left to right. Once again, I need to make sure there are two equal parts of the cookie. So if I wanted to cut the cookie like this, yes, I have two parts of the cookie, but they're not two equal parts of the cookie. This part is way smaller than this part, so that's not equal. If I want to partition this cookie in half, cutting a horizontal line, I need to start in the middle and I can take my time and there we go. Keisha would have one out of the two parts of the cookie and her friend would have one out of the two parts of the cookie. So each of them would receive half of the cookie. Hmm, I can still think of another way that we could partition this cookie in half. Keisha could also cut this circular cookie diagonally. Remember, diagonally is from corner to corner. Even though this circular cookie doesn't have corners, we can still cut it at a diagonal line. I could rather cut it diagonally this way, or I can cut it diagonally this way. I'm going to cut it diagonally this way. So watch me as I partition her cookie in half. Now I need to take my time to make sure that there are two equal parts to make it a half. And as you see, Keisha would receive a half of the cookie because she would have one out of the two parts of the cookie. And her friend would receive half of the cookie because she would have one out of the two parts of the cookie. Hmm, now Keisha received another cookie. And she didn't only wanna share it with one friend, but she wanted to share it with her three other friends. Well, with all of them sharing the cookie, that makes four people. And Keisha knew that if she wanted to split her cookie into four equal parts, then she needed to cut it into fourths. How can Keisha partition her cookie in fourths? Now, remember that when we are partitioning a cookie in fourths, we need four equal parts. Watch me as I partition this cookie in fourths. 
fourths. So first she could cut it with a vertical line up and down and then she could cut it horizontally and I'm making sure I'm in the middle, not too far up, but in the middle as I'm cutting it horizontally. And look, there are now four equal parts of the cookie. Keisha will receive one out of the four equal parts of the cookie. Her first friend would see, receive one out of the four equal parts of the cookie. Her other friend would receive one out of the four equal parts of the cookie. And then that last friend would receive one out of the four equal parts of that cookie. So each of them would receive a fourth or one fourth of the cookie. Hmm. I think of another way that we can possibly partition this cookie in fourths. We can partition it in fourths by cutting it with two diagonal lines. So remember my diagonal lines are going to follow this way. So when I cut it at first, I can cut it like this. And as you see, I have, first I start off with two equal parts of the cookie, but I need enough for all four of them. So I can start right here towards that middle and cut it again. And now there are four equal parts of the cookie. Once again, Keisha could receive one out of the four equal parts of the cookie. Her first friend could receive one out of the four equal parts of the cookie. Her second friend could receive one out of the four equal parts of the cookie. And then that last friend could receive one out of the four equal parts of the cookie. So each of them would receive one fourth of the cookie. Let's try a new scenario. So one day, Bobby had a sandwich and he wanted to share that sandwich with his best friend. He knew that he wanted each of them to receive an equal part of the sandwich. And since it's two of them, he knew that he needed two equal parts of the sandwich. Hmm, what is that called when you cut something into two equal parts? That's right, it's called a half. So Bobby knew that he wanted one half of the sandwich and he wanted his friend to have one half of the sandwich. How can Bobby partition his sandwich in half? Hmm, oh, I know one way. Bobby could cut his sandwich in half vertically. Watch me as I cut the sandwich in half vertically. So I remember vertically, it means up and down. All right, so Bobby could have uh, this part and then his friend could have this part. Wait, you say that the sandwich is not cut in half? Well, I see two parts. Oh yeah, that's right. In order for something to be cut in half, it has to be two equal parts. And this part is way smaller than this part, so they're not equal. Thank you, Rockstars, for correcting me. Let me partition this sandwich in half vertically. I need to remember that I need to start in the middle whenever I'm partitioning it in half vertically. So I am going to start in the middle and I'm going to begin cutting, going down, taking my time to try to make it as straight as possible. And there we go. So Bobby will have one out of the two parts of the sandwich, which is one half. And then his friend will have one out of the two parts of the sandwich, which is also one half. So Bobby will, will receive one half of the sandwich and his friend will receive one half of the sandwich. Awesome job, rock stars. But hmm, is there another way that Bobby could partition his sandwich in half? That's right. Bobby could partition his sandwich in half horizontally, which means from side to side. As I am cutting the sandwich horizontally, I want you to get your finger and I want you to follow me as I cut the sandwich. Let's begin. So remember, we need to start in the middle if we're cutting the sandwich in half horizontally. And then we're gonna take our time. All right, so now as you see, the sandwich is cut in half because I see two equal parts of the sandwich. Bobby would receive one out of the two parts of the sandwich. 
and then his friend would receive one out of the two parts of the sandwich. So now Bobby has one half of the sandwich and his friend has one half of the sandwich. All right, rock stars. I still think we can think of another way that we could cut this sandwich in half. We've already said that we could cut it vertically in half, which is up and down, and we can cut it horizontally in half, which is from side to side. Can you think of another way that we could cut it in half? That's right, diagonally. We are going to cut our sandwich in half diagonally. That's right, diagonally. We are going to cut our sandwich in half diagonally. So if I want to cut this sandwich in half diagonally, remember diagonal is from corner to opposite corner. And so we're going to take our time as we're cutting it in half diagonally. Use your finger to help me cut the sandwich. I need to take my time to make sure that we have two equal parts. And there we go. As you can see, there are two equal parts of the sandwich. So now Bobby could receive one out of the two parts of the sandwich, and then his friend could receive one out of the two parts of the sandwich. So now Bobby has one half of the sandwich and his friend has one half of the sandwich. Awesome job, rock stars. Now Bobby had another sandwich and he wanted to share it with his friend and his two other friends. So since now there are one, two, three, four of them who want a piece of the sandwich, Bobby still wants to be fair and he wants each of them to receive an equal part of the sandwich. If we are cutting this sandwich into four equal parts, what would that be called? That's right, in fourths. So how can Bobby partition his sandwich into fourths? Hmm. Well, let's think. Can you think of a way that Bobby could partition his sandwich into fourths? Okay, let's try this way. Let's try partitioning first, going a vertical line. So that means up and down. Okay, um, I'm stuck. I only see two equal parts. And I know two equal parts is a half, but I want four equal parts. What can I do now? Did you say cut it sideways? Yes, that's horizontally. I can cut it horizontally one more time and that should make four equal parts. Let's see. So let me start in the middle. Okay, let's count those pieces. One, two, three, four. And they're equal parts. So Bobby would have one out of the four equal parts. His friend would have one out of the four equal parts. His other friend would have one out of the four equal parts. And then that last friend would have one out of the four equal parts. So each of them would receive one fourth of the sandwich. Okay, but what if Bobby didn't want to cut it that way? What if he wanted to cut his sandwich another way where he's still partitioning it in fourths? Can you think of another way that Bobby could cut his sandwich? That's right, diagonally. Let's see, if Bobby cut his sandwich diagonally, he started from this corner and he made his way to this corner. I see that he has two equal parts but how could he cut it again where there will be four equal parts? That's right, he could cut it diagonally again from this corner to this corner. So I can cut it. Look, there are four equal parts of the sandwich. Bobby could receive one out of the four equal parts of the sandwich. His friend could receive one out of the four equal parts of the sandwich. His other friend could receive one out of the four equal parts of the sandwich. And then that final friend could receive one out of the four equal parts of the sandwiches. So each one of them would receive one fourth of the sandwich. Wow, rock stars, thank you so much for your help. Now it's time to stop and think. Which shape is partitioned in half?
And the answer is C. Remember when determining if a shape is partitioned in half, you have to make sure that there are two equal parts. A has four unequal parts, B has two unequal parts, yet C has two equal parts. So C is partitioned in half. Now it's your turn. I will read you a scenario and I want you to try practicing partitioning these shapes into halves and fourths. So one day you received a chocolate bar and you decided to share it with me, Miss Rogers. Since there are two of us, you wanted to know how can you partition your chocolate bar in half? So I want you to grab a sheet of paper, draw a rectangular chocolate bar, and then I want you to think of a way that you could partition it in half. And then after that, I want you to think about a way that you could partition your chocolate bar into fourths if you were to share your chocolate bar with me and your parents. So remember, also you will draw another rectangle and I want you to think about how you could partition your chocolate bar into fourths. Go ahead and begin. Okay, rock stars, we're back. So, one way that you could have partitioned your chocolate bar in half is you could have cut it vertically, which is up and down like this. So you would have received one out of the two pieces, and then I would have received one out of the two pieces. So each of us would have received one half of the chocolate bar. Another way that you could have partitioned your chocolate bar is you could have cut your chocolate bar horizontally, which means from left to right or from side to side. And so as you can see, you would have received one out of the two pieces of the chocolate bar and I would have received one out of the two pieces of the chocolate bar. So we each would have received one half of the chocolate bar. And then another way that you could have partitioned your chocolate bar in half is you could have partitioned it diagonally. So that's from one corner to the opposite corner. And I have to take my time with this one. So if I go to that corner, to this corner, okay? So you could have received one out of the two parts of the chocolate bar and I could have received one out of the two parts of the chocolate bar. Notice that even though these two shapes look like they are rotated or turned opposite directions. They still are two equal parts because they are the same in size. So this chocolate bar is cut in half. So one way that you could partition your chocolate bar into fours is first cutting it vertically, which is up and down. And then you only now you only have two equal parts, which is split in half but then you could cut it again horizontally like so. So then your mom would have one out of the four equal parts of the chocolate bar. You would have one out of the four equal parts of the chocolate bar. Your dad could have one out of the four equal parts of the chocolate bar. And then I could have one out of the four equal parts of the chocolate bar. So each of us would have one fourth of the chocolate bar and we split it into fourths because there are four equal parts. Another way that we could partition this chocolate bar into fourths is we could do it by cutting it vertically. So I could start down the middle again, going up and down. And then I could cut these two pieces in half again. So I have to take my time, try to draw it straight. Okay. So now we have four equal parts of the chocolate bar. So once again, your mom could have one fourth of the chocolate bar. You could have one fourth of the chocolate bar. Your dad could have one fourth of the chocolate bar and I could have one fourth of the chocolate bar. So we partitioned this chocolate bar into fourths by cutting vertical lines or vertical parts. Now, we could partition the chocolate bar another way. Let's try partitioning it 
drawn with two diagonals. So I'm going to start from this corner to this corner. Okay, and then I'm going to start from this corner to this corner. All right, let's notice something. Do you notice how these two pieces are larger than these two pieces? Even though there are four parts, they are not equal because these two pieces are larger than those two pieces. So if you notice, when we are trying to partition a rectangle into fourths, it can be quite difficult because if we're doing it, trying to draw two diagonal lines, it's not always going to work. So you'll notice that some shapes, you have to try different strategies when you're partitioning them into halves and fourths. Different shapes have different attributes, so you have to be mindful of that and just double check your work as you're partitioning your shapes. But we could also partition our rectangle or our chocolate bar, I should say, into fourths by partitioning them first in half horizontally. So I'm going to start in the middle. Okay, and then I'm going to partition both of these parts in half again. So I'm going horizontally again. And then I'm going to partition this one horizontally. Trying to draw it as straight as I can. <laughs> okay, so if I write it, write it really small, you would receive one fourth of the chocolate bar. Your mom will receive one fourth of the chocolate bar. Your dad will receive one fourth of the chocolate bar. And then I would receive one fourth of the chocolate bar. So this is another way that the chocolate bar was partitioned into fourths. Okay, rock stars. So remember, today we practice partitioning shapes into halves and fourths. Remember, halves are when we partition shapes into two equal parts, and fourths are when we partition shapes into four equal parts. I have a challenge for you. Next time you're eating a sandwich or a hamburger or a slice of pizza or even a candy bar, think about ways that you could possibly partition those foods into halves or fourths. See you soon, rock stars. Oh, <laughs>